My name is Natasha Valberg Macias. Uh, right now, I'm co founder, um, consultant, and facilitator in Social Climate. It's a non profit uh, cooperative where we work uh, for uh, climate action through social innovation. Uh, my studies are I study environmental science and then I made a post degree in water research and environment. Also, in addition, I had a, a master in quality and environment management and also in human resource management. And I made some courses related with uh, gender, natural resource solutions, sustainable development. And that's more or less my, my professional background. Uh, regarding what I have been doing all these years, uh, I focus mainly on the consultancy part and fundraising for, for projects in different areas uh, like waste management, um, agriculture, even marketing and social innovation that opens my, my mind a lot to this uh, working in different fields. And that's how I ended uh, co-founding my own company to, to develop the, the projects that I really were looking forward to, to do. What I do mainly is I work on eco-social and business innovation, uh, developing projects that are focused in this social innovation to face climate action, uh, sorry, climate crisis. <laughs> uh, also uh, related with uh, sustainability and environment protection. Uh, we work a lot with uh, natural basis solution and local economies. Uh, also with sustainable tourism and gender, We're applying the gender perspective across all the projects that we develop. Currently, we are developing a natural basis incubator to foster and develop a project that implement this kind of solution in the in a small neighborhood in, in the city of Malaga. And also we train on this natural basis solution and social entrepreneurship, also in climate resilience and all this linked with uh, gender. And I also organize, coordinate and moderate uh, events and workshop related with all the fields that we work in. And I have also experience working uh, in the analysis of uh, the impact of uh, digitalization, not only in the rural areas, but also in the existing gap uh, of gender, uh, because as you know, uh, the access to this kind of careers and, and also the digitalization tools and everything has this important gender gap. So I, I also related with that, analyzing the situation, especially here in the south of Spain and Andalusia. Uh, and yes, more or less, that's the, the work that we are doing right now. <laughs> I have to say that since I was a child, I have been a really curious person and nature was also uh, always something that I really was passionate about, uh, to know how ecosystems work, how they connected, uh, the relation between them. Uh, so uh, I watched a lot of documentaries of uh, nature, all the, the people working in uh, places like National Geographic and this kind of things uh, were really inspiring, inspiring for me. That led me to study environmental science because they have a more open vision of uh, nature and, and you can study biology, chemistry, physics, math. It's uh, a bit of more mix of science. So that was really fun for me because um, I like to know a bit of everything. <laughs> so it was, uh, that was why I chose those, uh, those career. Um, and I, because also I wanted to develop uh, things, projects, initiatives that had a real impact on environment and biodiversity and to help to have a better and more sustainable world to live in. So that was my main inspiration to, to work in what I'm working right now. Well, first of all, uh, obviously, it's uh, email check <laughs> to see what what I, I have on my mailbox and also checking my Google calendar because we work a lot uh, with that tool as we work at home. Uh, it's a way to be uh, all the team can be connected and knowing where is uh, everyone and how the, the availability of each of, of us for, for the different projects. Uh, as I work from from home, I use a lot of uh, different digital tools. Uh, we also work a lot in Google Drive for all the sharing of documents. We also use Miro to organize our work. And also when we do some webinars and workshop, it's a very interesting tool to, to work with uh, and develop the, the project structure or consulting or, or whatever. Uh, I usually have uh, several online meetings every day uh, through Skype, uh, Zoom, Meet, um, a lot of other platforms that have increased a lot in this pandemic situation. 
And I also use uh, Zoom meeting and webinars to develop our own trainings and, and events. And the rest of the day, uh, I'm preparing proposals for, for fundraising for our own projects. Um, also implementing the ongoing projects that we have on training and, and other kinds of uh, studies and preparing the justification work and, on, and all this paperwork. I'm also in charge of uh, the administrative part of the company, so I also um, I worried about the payments and on all these kind of things that we also work online with the bank. And well, uh, also a lot of publication on, on LinkedIn. We also use WhatsApp a lot to, to connect with collaborators and, and clients. And, and well, quite active in, in LinkedIn, as I said, because uh, being honest, I don't use uh, other social networks because I'm more focused on the on the working part. So in my case, Twitter and Facebook and Instagram are not so useful for my for my work, but I'm really active in, in LinkedIn. And that would be my uh, usual day for, for me. First of all, when I when I was uh, about to finish high school, because I was uh, quite sure that I will do science. So uh, here in Spain, you have to choose uh, between the uh, the second when when you are in high school, you must choose between science or other other um, matters. Uh, so I was quite sure that I that I was studying science, but I was not so sure about which career exactly I, I wanted to to study after that. Uh, I was thinking in biology. I was also thinking in veterinary because I really like uh, animals. But then uh, a year before I finished high school, they put a hearing the University of Malaga Environmental Science. And when I checked the, uh, the program and I saw it was so mixed that I had the chance to study different aspects of, of science, biology, uh, chemistry, organic chemistry, uh, even legal uh, aspects from, from the environment, uh, I thought it was perfect for me uh, because, as I said, I'm curious and I like to know a bit of everything. So that lead me to to study that. Uh, when I finish, as uh, environmental science is a very um, open career, we know a bit of everything, but we don't know a lot of something concrete. I knew that I had to specialize myself in something. So I decided to make a post degree in, in water resource and environment, also in the University of Malaga. That gave me the chance to uh, travel to the United States to develop my final post degree project. And I was in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, studying the potential risk of contamination of groundwater there in the county. And it was a really, really uh, amazing experience for me, not only professional, but also personal. I learned a lot. Um, it opened my vision on how work on environmental management, water management, other uh, working cultures and other points of view. So that was really amazing. And when I came back, um, because of being out and my level of English was quite better than when I left, that opened me a lot of doors here in, in, in Andalusia. So a company contacted me because they needed someone to study a special course on project management. And they wanted someone that had a bit of uh, international experience and a high level of English. So they chose me and I could study this uh, part of project management, uh, more related with European farms. But well, it, even so, uh, it was a, a good training about this uh, whole project management. And I started to work with them. And while I was uh, already working, I studied also this uh, um, master on environment and, and quality management and also human resource, because it was something that I felt I needed to develop better my, my job. Uh, because I work a lot of with, with teams, uh, building consortiums. So I thought that this part of uh, human resource was really important to really um, decide who was the right people to, to be part of different projects. And after that, I, I have been developing other courses like gender issues, uh, natural basic solution, all related with what I use uh, to do in, the, in my job. Every time I find a new uh, matter that is important for what we do and that I see they have a lack of uh, knowledge or experience I try to to keep uh, training myself you know <laughs> being honest uh, I wouldn't uh, and I also have to say that when I started I 
didn't think that things will go the way they have been. <laughs> but it's true that uh, all what I have uh, done during this uh, years uh, made me be uh, and become who I am right now as person and professional. So, and, and as I'm very happy uh, where I am right now and what I'm doing, uh, I wouldn't change actually anything. So I'm, I'm quite happy with the path I destiny made me take. <laughs> Well, I have several uh, professors in the university that were really inspiring ones because they, they were so passionate about what they were teaching and they were able to transmit this passion to, to the students or, or at least to me. Uh, one example was the, the professor that we have in, in biology and regarding um, more plants and this kind of things. He, he was a really inspiring man, uh, really skilled. Um, and he was able to explain all his experience and, 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 and transmit this passion that he, he has to, to all of us. So that was really, really inspiring. And also the professor that I have uh, regarding law, uh, I thought it would be more boring <laughs> than, other, uh, than other contents that I had in, in, in the university, but uh, was the same. He was so um, involved in on what he was doing. He was um, uh, such a good professor uh, that that was uh, really inspiring. And I had always this thought to to be like them in the future, you know, uh, doing something that I really like and that I really able to to do well and transmit to, to the people with the same passion that I feel it. Some of them uh, they did, but I have to say that uh, more or less uh, eighty percent, something like that, of the people that I'm related with come from engineering careers. Um, because when I started, environmental science was a really new career, so a lot of them come from other paths like biology or like um, forest management. That's all, also an engineer or industrial engineer, chemical engineer. Um, so I have more engineers around myself than, than people with my, with my studies. Uh, critical thinking, for example, is very important uh, because when you face a, uh, not a project, but when you face a problematic like uh, the um, climate change, uh, you need to have this critical thinking to see why all the things that have been done in the last years haven't worked as they should. And, and how to face new mm, solutions and new opportunities. So critical thinking, it's mainly important. Also data analysis, because if you don't know what have been done before and, and all the information you have first, sometimes, sometimes you can lose a lot of time uh, doing the same that other people have done before you. Um, and it's also important uh, to be able to extract the really meaningful information from data, because uh, we have a lot of data from from a lot of different studies and sources. So it's really important to, to see uh, which data are important and what information you can get out of them. Also active listening. It's uh, really, really important in what we do because uh, one of the first things that, uh, that I do every time we start to develop a, a project is to speak with the, with the local community, what they need, are, uh, what problems they are facing. And if you don't make this active listening, uh, you don't get uh, the, the main for information from from them and then you start to develop some projects uh, that they that not align with the needs from that people so participation is low and finally they end in, in projects that has no really impact in 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 societies also collaboration for us it's uh, a core for our business uh, we understand that we need to be surrounded by other professionals to cover the gaps that we have uh, to be stronger. We, we don't understand to go alone uh, because we think that as more people are involved in a project, uh, more easy is that, the, that this project is uh, successful and, and has a real impact. All the social skills that you put in the list are mainly important uh, because you need to be able to interact with people, to have empathy. Um, you know, that's, that's something that is really, really important at least in, in, in what I do and, and also in even when you go to develop new technologies and this kind of things, you need to be aware about 
how people interact with technology because I think that one of the most important problems with the technology is that that sometimes it's not really adapted to people's need or people level of knowledge to to use that tools. So this kind of social skills are also mandatory for what we do. And from my point of view out of that list, I think that my academic education was uh, has been a really important uh, case skill. Also, you need to be resilient to adapt to different areas, different problems, different approach. That's really important. And for me, probably the most important thing is this capacity to be surrounded by skilled people that uh, make you learn continuously, that make you improve like a person and like professional, and that help you to, to really cover all the aspects that you need to cover because you cannot know about everything. So this uh, capacity to find the right people to, to go with you on, on this uh, journey is, uh, for me, is quite important. Well, and anything regarding sectors, uh, anything related with the climate change, both mitigation, adaptation and, and resilience, also sustainable development, climate justice, waste management, water management, environmental management, uh, everything related with agriculture from the corpse to the manufacture of uh, final products, forest management, biodiversity and, and conservation. Uh, you can be consultant, you can be project manager, uh, an environmental technician. So you have quite of a big range of uh, opportunities uh, in this field. Well, right now, the main challenge is to really make visible the urgent uh, that we have, uh, the urgent need that we have to act on climate change. Uh, we have been talking about this for years. Uh, actually, the Kyoto Protocol, it's from the 19th, and, and we're still not uh, fitting the, the objectives and, and the highlights that were marked on the, on the protocol. Uh, so for us, that's one of the main challenges, to, to really make uh, people understand that it's the time is now. We, we, we have no more time to keep talking about what we want to do. We need to start doing things. Also increasing the awareness of the economic uh, sector from private companies, public administrations. It's really important that they understand that they have different times and they, uh, I understand that they take time from once they approve a law to implement it and this kind of things, but they need to act quicker uh, regarding climate change and also citizens. So every part of society can understand their role and how they can help to, to face this uh, this crisis and also uh, posting and implementing solutions beyond technology because sometimes um, in environment and sustainability um, a lot of the focus is put on technology um, for example uh, renewable energies uh, solar panels this kind of things but more than that technology obviously is really important and can help a lot but there are also a lot of other solutions like natural basis solutions uh, which are cheaper and faster to implement. Uh, so we work also uh, making people understand that not uh, that well that technology is not the only solution to face a climate crisis. That we have another tools in our hands that can have a real and fast impact. And that's for us is actually right now the main challenge. Well, first, that they have to be passionate about it. Science are, for me, are something uh, special because, uh, well, um, they explain so many things and, and they are so interesting and, and you can study so many different aspects from our world. Uh, but I think you need this, this passion because it's true that they are not easy careers. Uh, so it can be really frustrating when you really don't like uh, maths or physics and, and you have to study it, in, at the, especially at the university level. Uh, so first of all, that they do it because they are passionate about it. Um, because that's a way also to keep motivated uh, to study it and also to develop your professional uh, career. And that will lead them also to be able to work in things that they really like and make them grow as person and, and, and also like uh, professionals. And probably they're all the, the, another important thing for me 
is not to be afraid uh, of failures. Uh, I know that our society is not uh, not prepared. It's not the world, but they don't push failures. You know, you you need to be successful. You need to be uh, always in, in the right point and and doing the right things. But failures are part of the life, and you actually learn more from your failures than one than from your successes. Uh, and I think it's really important that uh, young people that start uh, studying these things, and especially if they want to. Uh, develop their own businesses, they need to lose this uh, uh, fear of uh, failing or of trying and not achieving what they want because they probably will need to do it 10 times until they, they get to where they, they want to go. So uh, that's really important for me. Well, yeah, as I said before, natural basis solutions are um, something that is mandatory, I think, for uh, bi uh, biodiversity conservation and facing the, the climate change because uh, nature is wise. Uh, so copying what nature do to fix themselves, it's uh, something logical. And, and I think it had no more discussion about, you know, when, when nature has green filters to clean water, or why we should put so many technology when we when we could do the same and at the same time that you put the screen filter you also have uh more vegetation you are written sorry <laughs> renaturalizing uh, the environment uh, you have a, a place where the co2 can be also captured so they have uh, a lot a lot of uh, advantage and they are fast to implement they used to be cheap uh, you can do it in almost every part of the world so it's also a, they are very good solutions for not only a developed country but also a poorest country that are really facing right now the impacts of the climate crisis so i think it's uh, really really important to boast natural basis solutions and people have to study them because it's something uh, even if it's a, a concept that it, it exists for at least more than 10 years, it's not something that really uh, a lot of people know about and what they mean, how you can implement it, uh, how the, you can detect them. So I think it's really important that more and more people start uh, focusing on, on that to, to foster natural basic solutions because as more professionals know about them, more of them will use them as solutions too.